I usually find myself in a quite a tricky situation when you know trying to talk and teach about syntropic agroforestry. Uh, and the situation is the following. Um, basically, for me, syntropic agroforestry is, on one hand, the most exciting thing that happened in my life. Um, it really it literally changed my life uh, and put me in a position of prosperity and resilience, but also in a position that I can relate to other human beings in a much better place. But on the other hand, it's by far the most difficult thing I've ever done. Um, not so much because it's hard work or because it's technically difficult, but just because of the time factor, because it's, it's ongoing, it's forever, really. And that, uh, that need to show up on a daily basis forever, <laughs> it's, it's challenging. I mean, it is challenging for me and it's challenging for most people that I, that I, that I talk to. So I'm usually faced this, you know, which side of those two should I present at first and next and how do we go about it? Should I just bring the wonderful things about or should I just be a bit more pessimistic and bring all, all the challenges? So what I decided to do today is perhaps to present a bit of both and go even further. So trying to do a little bit of a, let's say, a SWOT analysis, even though I don't think we really have threats to me, it's more challenges. So that's what I'd like to do today. Uh, talk about some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses, so what that's within the agroforestry framework, and also some of the challenges and some of the opportunities, you know, that's what's without, is from the external to the framework. All right, so let's start with the strength, because for me, uh, let's start on the, on the good note. <laughs> so basically for me, the philosophical framework uh, that comes with syntropic Agroforest comes in the package for me. It's one of its highest strengths. It really allows me to relate to the planet and to other organisms in a, in a much bigger way, in a much more natural way, in a much more exciting way that we are actually here together in a dialogue mode and we are cooperating and trying to really move forward. So to me, that's probably the biggest strength. It does bring a lot of things in it. It's also really ecologically literal, meaning it's actually really strong. Uh, it's probably the, the best framework I've seen into bringing out those ecological, scientifically proven, let's say, principles into one mode of operation. Uh, to me, it's, it, it's really the best I've seen. It's, it's just so powerful, so cohesive, so conceptually and realistically logic. Um, it's also to me one of the biggest strengths is that it's, it's a process so it's it's a way of farming of regenerating the land that's process based so we are not looking for external inputs uh, actually you know that is the best one of the, the second best strengths is that we are actually able to grow high density nutrient food without external inputs so but yes we have to work with processes but those ecological processes they are real and they are supported by a really strong philosophical framework as well that help us to navigate the emotions of the of the um, the methodology of the journey really for me also it's proven I have done it in a number of occasions. This is my last project. We've been here for four and a half years and I've proven, it's proven to me that this is applicable. Uh, we've regenerated the land. We are producing bananas and papayas and many other fruits now. The veggies are growing, you know, the fauna is coming back. The, you know, the vibe of the place has changed. To me, it's a proven method. I've applied here, I've applied somewhere else, and it works. Of course, it's not a copy and paste type of thing, it's not a recipe, uh, but the framework behind it, it does work 100%. And it's applicability. I just love it that it's applicable through all to the world. Basically, you know, that's what I usually ask people when they tell me, oh, can I do syntropy in the desert? Can I do in the northern tip of Europe? Can I do it? And I only ask them two questions. One, does plant grow there? If you have plants, and especially if you have trees that are able to grow in this locale, in this climate, then great, you're halfway there. And then the next question is, are you willing to do it? 
because that's how it takes. It takes one person willing to do it in a place that is conducive to growing trees and plants. doesn't even need to be trees, really. If all we can grow is its plant, that's fine, then it's doable. It's basically, it's applicable throughout the world. It's, it's just such an awesome framework. All right, weaknesses. Okay, to me, the biggest weakness, which is kind of a weird one, is on its name. You know, unfortunately, the name Syntropic, which I can't think of a better one, because in that single word, all of the processes that we are trying to do in our system, they are encompassed in that. They are in it. But unfortunately, the name Syntropic ends with what? Ends with tropic. And for most people, unless they are willing to ask another question, they just go, oh, I'm from a temperate climate, or I'm from a Mediterranean climate, or it's just not applicable, it's only applicable for the tropics. And then we put that name with lots of pictures of bananas and papayas and those tropical fruits, then it becomes very difficult for people that are not really willing to ask too many questions to understand that it's actually applicable everywhere. So, unfortunately, that name has caused us a little bit of problem and a few more uh, questions that we need to answer. But I don't really know which name could be better because it's such a perfect name, scientifically speaking, uh, on, the, you know, on the process of the, of the method, it's just spot on. So it's kind of one of those things that we just have to accept, I guess. Uh, for me, the lack of learning material, let's say official learning material, unfortunately, Ernest hasn't gone there and really produced a lot of, uh, let's say, hard copy material where people can take home, can study. Uh, there is a, quite a bit of kind of verbal uh, content out there, of course, not as much in English as there is in Portuguese. Uh, but I think this to be a weakness. Uh, I, I really would love to see Ernest to put a few more official content out there to guide people in general, to guide people that are also teaching, to guide people that are consulting, to, to really guide people in that whole journey because it just keeps open to too many interpretations and too many points of view. And some of them might not be as how Ernest would like to have it presented or how he sees the, the thing moving forward. So I do see that as a bit of a problem. Uh, it is, the other side is that it does open for other people to come and co-create and that's what I try to do. Uh, I try to understand, I've done as many courses as I possibly could with Ernest and all the people so I can understand and now I'm trying to bring all the parts of the equation. Because I think another weakness is that there is not really an attempt to integrate with all the frameworks. I feel Syntropic, it's a bit isolated in the corner, uh, whereas it could be a lot more into the regen egg scene, it could be a lot more talking with permaculture framework, with the holistic management framework and other things. Another one of its weaknesses, which is, you know, it's just a bit young, it's new uh, into the scene. So it's, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> it is a young methodology. I mean, Ennis has been applying for many, many years, but really has only got out there into the world in the last time, 10 years. So we do have, you know, lack of examples throughout the planet. Lots of examples in Brazil. Now we're getting quite a few examples here in Australia, uh, but still on the colder climate, on the drier climates, uh, we're still not having that many powerful examples where people can go and touch and smell and really have a feel and go, no, I can, it's doable, it's doable for me, I can see myself doing it. Um, and that just leads to perhaps some erroneous perceptions. And I think that's really fueled by perhaps this lack of material, uh, the name being a bit, oh, it's only applicable for the tropic. And we tend to have perceptions which, you know, one of the main perceptions that I try to break down is that people tend to perceive that the idea needs to be, oh, you need to have a forest, you need to have acres and acres for the macro-organism to show up. And that's really not true, you know, that perception is not realistic. We can have a very nice, beautiful, productive, syntropic system in literally 100 square meters. We don't need acres and acres for it to fulfill its power. It's really not. So I find this to be a little bit of a weakness within that framework, that I think we could work on that to improve that, 
because you know the strengths to me are given it's proven it's applicable everywhere all right so what's some of the challenges then that i have come across at least uh with the framework and you know what is perhaps holding it back from exploding because to me that's one of the questions i've got uh why hasn't it just why isn't everybody doing it and i think to me one of the questions one of the biggest challenges is that when we're talking about a centropic system it's a forever journey uh, basically, we human beings need to interact with it forever, which I know that in, you know, in agriculture, some forms of agriculture, when you're going for, for fruits and nut trees, you know, that is part of the game. It is forever. Uh, but I find that the relationship in the Syntropic is a little bit more intense on this forever, especially on the first years, where there is a lot of management, a lot of definition, a lot of Ooh, how is this moving along, you know, not really knowing how to get, go through. Uh, I find this forever challenge that we just have to show up. It's the time frame, really. The time framework that we have to operate under, it really, to me, just stays in there and in there. So it takes a lot of, a, a lot of effort to move. Also, because it's process-based, then it's based on experience. You know, there is just so much that a theoretical content can give to people. You know, people actually need to go out there and dig the ground and plant and manage only through that process of experience that they really start to know what's happening how how they can you know influence the system in the direction that they are moving uh, it is very labor intensive there is no question about it it is labor intensive uh, and that provides or uh, that becomes the challenge uh, not only in the very small scale, the subsistence scale, because I have to show up every time, but also on the bigger, larger scales where, you know, we do have large costs to keep the labor force moving through those systems because they are, you know, we are dealing with many plants that are there that needs to be serviced on a regular basis. That's the power of the process. We must do that. If we don't, then the system becomes weaker, and we are now moving to other processes, which is, you know, bringing into external inputs and those other issues. So labor is a challenge, but in my view, in the planet that we've got, with 9 billion people, with lots of people wanting to, to learn and grow, and, you know, I don't see that as a problem. I think if we move away from our economic challenges, that everything needs to be cheap and this and that, if we actually embrace the more humane side of Syntropic, then, this is an opportunity for me. So I wasn't really sure where to put it, but I'll put it now because at the moment I see it as a challenge. In the future, with the number of people that are willing to play, I think it's an opportunity to embrace them all. Uh, it does require quite a high level of skills in many fronts. Um, that, again, relates back to the labor force. So not only there is a lot of work to be done, but some of those works are kind of highly skilled you know, pruning trees and maybe climbing trees uh, and organizing that organic matter and observing is one of the highest skills that people need to develop. And that, that relationship between you know, the boss and the employee, the relationship between me and my systems or me and my family comes into that equation as well. Uh, and the community as well. We need to expand into the community uh, to perhaps gather those skills. So it's not so simple, but it's very exciting on the same way uh, it can be costly uh, especially when we want to go too big too soon uh, it can be fairly costly because just gathering out that resources out those plant materials be it seed cuttings or seedlings of grafted trees it can be very very costly quite quick you know if you think that we might be putting maybe uh, let's say 20 to 30 plants in a lineal meter on a bed you know it can very quickly add up and it can, go, it can be more than that it could be up to a hundred uh, plants on a on a square um, meter let's say uh, of course all those plants will germinate and grow in succession but it's quite a lot of investment that can uh, escalate really really quickly and then you know becomes a risk investment as well we do have some issues with some larger scale uh, you know, there isn't that many um, farms, commercial farms in the world, in Brazil even. Uh, there isn't too many that are able to do that. And part of the challenge is because we do have a lack of machineries that are able to be, to be able to do the job 
in the quantity, but most often in the quality that we require. Uh, so Ennis has been spending a lot of time and a lot of his own resources trying to develop those machines. And I think we're, we're moving ahead, but there is a whole system around machine development that perhaps is not conducive to the syntropic way of living because they want to sell more steel and they want to sell bigger machines. Uh, whereas we're looking for, you know, more compact things that are lighter, that can do more qualitative type of jobs. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a movement, but the most, more people that start to understand the idea, then, you know, we will have those skills showing up soon. So it's a bit of a challenge that requires a bit of time and we do have to use our creativity to solve some of those challenges. And that's perhaps where I'm going next then, because the mindset, the mindset of the farmer, of the land manager, of the boss, of the employees, that needs to change. And to me, that is one of the biggest challenges, our relationship to the natural world, not so much as a resource, but something that really is part of us and we have to work together. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful challenge actually to go through it and see the growth in myself, in my partner as well, who's been... We've been together for a while on that journey, uh, it, but it is, a, it is a challenge because we have to be willing to work uh, within ourselves to become a better person, to become, yeah, to become who we want to become really. It's, it really needs to go there because with the old mindset, uh, the old paradigms, you know, it becomes very difficult to be syntropic and to do regen in January, in my experience. And finally, to me, one of the biggest challenges because of that as well, because it's a human-centered system, as I understand, it requires a lot of human relationships. And as we can see throughout the world, that is perhaps the biggest challenge that we have right now, is how can I have my needs met, but also have your needs met, and we come together to create you know, a bigger picture. So the level of relationships, in my understanding, with Syntropic Egg, where we need people working, we need people talking, we need people, you know, solving those issues and making those quite complex decisions make that framework challenge as well. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges we're starting to hit uh, when people are starting to scale, wanting to scale up is really how do we make those collective decisions where, you know, the your employee has exactly the same right as the boss to make a decision on how to move it about. And actually, it's probably more the employee needs to be even more empowered to make those decisions because he or she is the one on the ground really observing what's happening. So it, we do need to change uh, a bit on those relationship fronts, which take time and a lot of effort and a lot of communication, a lot of, you know, give and take. Um, all right, opportunities. Man, there is so many, but let's start. To me, the opportunity to regenerate the land, it's just... It's astonishing. The power of syntropic agroforestry is it's one, it's 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 literally one magnitude of difference, one order of magnitude faster. And anywhere I've seen, be it on the farms that they have actually done some scientific research in Brazil, in my place here, basically one year of your effort is equivalent to 10 years of natural research, natural. Uh, regeneration and that's in a climate where it, which is really non-brittle which is really moist I reckon on a climate that is a dry climate a more brittle climate uh, that order of mag magnitude could actually be significantly increased uh, of course different tools different ideas that needs to be applicable but it's just so exciting to see how fast things move and how fast things regenerate and how fast we have fauna showing up you know birds and frogs and snakes and you know all those those beings that were not here on this land when we arrived four and a half years ago and now it's just this music it's it's just so exciting so to me that just beats even being able to produce food but the thing is that it's we are regenerating while you're producing food so we are just taking all the all the boxes it's just super exciting to me, as I briefly said, the capacity for, for human development, that is a massive opportunity as well, because we are doing, we are developing ourselves for our, our own sake, for our own good, and we're doing that while we're generating the planet, while we're supporting the animals, while we're supporting our plant communities. So to me, it's really a no-brainer, and it's just so exciting. Yes, it's not easy, 
but once you get over that and you just start to to see the growth in yourself you just you just want to you want more you want to do more that's that's really beautiful uh, also you know because of that need for humanity to get involved there is also a need to bring community and you don't even need to live in community but just by having surplus food uh, you start to make connection you start to share some of that produce which really you can't get anywhere else the quality of the, the produce coming off my syntropic systems is second to none there is nothing that gets closer when you give that to people and they actually taste what tomato is supposed to taste or a cucumber or a corn or a banana it's you know community really then starts to foster you really start to work on that personal level and they go Ooh, maybe i'll support you and you support me and we exchange it's it's really 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 satisfying that's to me one of the biggest opportunities is that if you are looking for a meaningful activity even a meaningful hobby uh to me there is nothing that gives me greater satisfaction and greater pain as well but it's just so much satisfaction to actually be able to look back after one two three four years and go wow look what i've done i've done something meaningful for that. even though nobody might know it you know that you've done something meaningful for yourself for your community and for the planet and for the little ant and any other thing and the mice yeah they do come the mice do come and, and eat a bit but that's it, it, it's part of the game and again that's part of changing the mindset that the you know can we allow the rats to have a bit you know because they are part of this planet can we allow the bats to have a bit can we allow the ants to have a bit i think we all can can go there uh, to me the subsistence level is proven that's what i've been living on you know i'm not a, a commercial farmer maybe in the future i would like to be there but at this stage i'm really 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 happy working with subsistence frameworks and try how to make the most of the small pieces of land uh, and to me that's proven there is just so much potential for subsistence living and that could be for the poorest of the poor to the richest of the rich everybody can can fit under here for the very time poor the one that is working nine to five saturday to saturday even at that level just doing a little bit every now and then the rewards are so immense not only in the food that you're going to produce but the excitement and the regeneration that happens inside of us it's just magical uh, resilience goes with that as well you know once you are able to be satisfied and you are able to work with the land and you are able to produce and you are able to regenerate you are able to be resilient you know the climate change that is happening now that is throwing everybody out a bit look that's part of the game but once you have established forest even if it's a micro forest man those organisms they are here to stay we've been through a massive flood event early last year the biggest on record here and you know i had water and logs just washing through my systems and guess what yes we've lost a bit we lost a fair bit of ground cover of mulch but 90% of the plants were there supporting each other, holding hands, and boom, you know, literally two months later, everything was back on track. Every, everything was back growing and producing. So highly, highly resilient system. I've also, uh, I've taught this beautiful woman uh, in Spain, we've done a course, and in the beginning of the course, a fire went through her spot, and she showed me the video, the only green spot was a small syntropic system that a friend of hers had planted everything else was black so to me that is just so exciting it's such a massive opportunity that gives us not only food but peace of mind that we will be able to stay here for the long term regardless of all of those political decisions and things that they are doing there, are, there is also immense opportunity that's part of my work that i'm trying to do more and more it's the integration with all the frameworks, especially holistic management, especially, you know, the beautiful work that the, the regrarians are doing as well with the mapping capabilities, uh, you know, bringing the biodynamics in as well. You know, to me, it is a framework that it's able to adopt all the frameworks, but not to say, oh, this is all syntropic, but are able to bring those other frameworks in and still respect their individuality. 
um, is not to say, oh, this is syntropic as well. No, you know, we can have Korean natural farming helping us. We can have the agrarians helping us. We can have permaculture helping us. We can all help each other. And I think that's a massive opportunity that the syntropic egg brings into the equation. And uh, that's, that's where a lot of my work is going at the moment, is how can we bring those things together in a way that we respect the individuality of all of those frameworks, uh, but we can bring them all in a more cohesive way where people can then understand, you know, ooh, Syntropic's a bit stronger for me. Ooh, I really enjoy permaculture. I'm really a kind of mapping guy. Oh, I love the, the microbiology. I'm going to do some of some of that soil food web stuff, or I'm gonna really play with Jadam and Korea Natural Farming to try and work with that. It doesn't matter, but we need to be able to find a position where we can have all of those wonderful tools and techniques and methodologies and frameworks working together synergistically in a flexible way. And then finally, you know, Syntropic or the Regen scene is just so multifaceted that everybody can be a part of it, you know. That's, uh, that's what I tell people, even if you've done a course and planting acres or managing plants and all your thing, look, there is just so many challenges that we need to work through that there is, there is a role for everybody. There is people that want to teach, there is people that want to consult, there is people that want to build machinery, there is people that want to, to be helping people to sell, you know, understanding the logistics, look, you know, teaching consumers, uh, teaching how to cook different plants, perennial plants, exotic plants. Bush regeneration to me, it's a massive opportunity here in Australia, it's a big industry. And to me, in terms of economic viability, in terms of working with Syntropic in a job sense, in my understanding, is the easiest way about. I mean, it's, a hard, it's hard work for sure, but because it has already a, a, an economic framework around it and because of the very poor job, that the chemicals are doing it in terms of regenerating, um, I just see so much potential. Look, I could talk here for days and days, but that I just wanted to present a little bit of a framework to help, to really help people to see, is this for me or is that for me? Uh, and if that's for you, that's so exciting, you know, welcome on board. And if that's not for you, that's so exciting too, because you know we need other things and we need other ideas and we need people to really do what they want to do. So I hope that helped. Questions, comments, suggestions are mostly welcome. Get in touch if you want or need as well. And look, I really, I really hope that you you join the board, you join the boat, you join the cause, you join the movement because you will feel a lot better. Planting one square meter, it's already a long way down. All right. All the best. Much love to you all. Take it easy. Bye.